That scandal that has rocked Liberty University and its evangelical leader, Jerry Falwell Jr. A former pool attendant, Giancarlo Granda, calls Falwell a predator, saying he engaged in sexual liaisons with Falwell's wife while Falwell watched. We'll talk with Granda in an exclusive interview. First, Deborah Roberts brings us the latest on the scandal and a second allegation that emerged overnight from a former student at Liberty. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, George. Yeah, this is a scandal that seems to grow deeper and wider by the day for a man who was once at the top of his game in Christian conservative circles. Now, Jerry Falwell Jr. is not only out at the world's top uh, Christian university, but he may have also lost his reputation as well. This morning, that new allegation about the Falwells, coming from a former Liberty University student providing an anonymous account in Politico, alleging he had a sexual encounter with Becky Falwell, the wife of the school's former president, Jerry Falwell Jr., while he was a 22-year-old. The Falwells called the allegation false and mean-spirited. It is the latest in a shocking string of scandals to hit one of the most influential families in the evangelical conservative movement. As our friendship has grown, so has my admiration for Mr. Trump. A staunch advocate in Republican politics and for President Trump, Falwell resigned from the college following a series of stunning developments. First, a racy photo he posted, then took down from social media with his arm around his wife's assistant. He apologized for posting it, saying it was just in good fun from a costume party. Then, that first jaw-dropping allegation of sexual impropriety that directly goes against the school's strict moral code. We are so proud of our students here at Liberty. And it's, it's just such an honor to be able to serve alongside them. And we try to teach good family values and good morals. Falwell accused by his 29-year-old former business partner, Giancarlo Granda, of being aware of and even observing Granda's affair with Falwell's wife, Becky, though Falwell denies any involvement. Granda says he met the Falwells when he was a 20-year-old pool attendant in 2012, and their relationship took off from there, lasting years. He provided this audio recording as proof. His new thing is, like, telling me every time he hooks up with people, like, I'm, like, I don't have feelings. Yeah, I'm not trying to do that. Granda says he vacationed with the Falwells, even went into business with them, owning a Miami youth hostel. In this email shared exclusively with ABC News, Granda says Falwell offered a glowing recommendation for him to apply to Georgetown University in 2018, calling him a quick study on all business-related matters, consistent, dependable, and someone who has operated with the highest business ethics and integrity. But the relationship later soured. Now the Falwells are accusing Granda of extortion, claiming he threatened to go public with the affair unless he was paid millions. But Granda denies that allegation. Overnight, the Falwells declining to comment on Granda's allegations. Falwell has reached out to numerous news organizations over the last week, including ABC News, and so is his wife, Becky, both vigorously denying most of Granda's claim. Uh, they both say that they're victims of a man who tried to take advantage of them. No word yet from the couple on this newest allegation. George? Okay, Deb, thanks very much. Let's bring in Giancarlo Granda right now. Thank you for joining us this morning. And let's begin with uh, their denial. They say that you had an affair with Mrs. Falwell, but, but that Jerry Falwell Jr. was not involved in any way, but you say from the start they were both involved? Uh, first off, thank you for having me on. Um, and Jerry's line, um, that was his game plan from the beginning to just throw her under the bus, um, which I, I think speaks a lot about who he is, about his character. Um, and he was aware from day one of our relationship and he, he did in fact watch. So how would that work? What, describe the encounters. So let's go back to when I first met them. I was 20 years old, working at the Fountain Blue Hotel, um, working my way through college. And, you know, I'm talking to some guests, and I, I noticed this woman behind me staring at me, and she was noticeably drunk. Um, and she was just flirting with me. You know, and then we started flirting back and forth. Um, and then towards the end of my work shift, she's like, hey, would you want to go back to my hotel room? And as a single 20-year-old, I'm like, yeah, of course. And and then she's like, but my husband wants to watch. And immediately I thought it was a, a bit strange and I backed off. And she's like, oh no, but he, he's not gonna do anything. He's just gonna sit in the corner and he just, he just wants to watch and it's his thing. And she mentioned that they were actually at, the, at a swingers club the night before, uh, Miami Velvet. 
and but it wasn't their thing. They said it was kind of gross because there's too many people, and they wanted a more intimate um, session. So af I had no idea who they were at the time. You know, after my work shift, they called me through a blocked number um, to schedule where to meet, and we met at another hotel. Uh, and I walk into the lobby, and you know, Becky's sitting there waiting for me, and we were both nervous at the time. And then she offered me whiskey to relax, to calm my nerves. We talked for a bit, I relaxed, and then we went upstairs, and Jerry was laying on the bed. He was laying on the bed, he was drunk, and he was giggling. And again, I'm kind of weirded out at this moment, and I said, hey, if at any point you get jealous or you want me to back off, just uh, let me know, and I'll walk out of here. He's like, no, no, just, just go for it. Um, and so this would that, then happen on, on other occasions as well, and, and what would he be doing? Right. I mean, he. I don't want to go too much into the details. Um, I don't want to go too much into into the details, but um, he 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 enjoyed watching. They say now that you're uh, trying to extort them. Why come forward now? This started seven years ago. So, again, go, so going back to that time, I, you know, after after that Fountain Blue or the the hotel, um, you know, that first night. Um, shortly after, we had a weekend getaway at Chica Resort in the Florida Keys. Um, and in this trip, you know, we were doing our, you know, the nature of the relationship uh, continued there. And, um, you know, I mentioned to them that when I was younger, right, when I was in high school, I suffered with uh, video game addiction. Um, you know, at the time I was timid, a bit nervous. And I believe, you know, now in hindsight that they spotted these weaknesses um, and made me an ideal target. Um, I, I shared, you know, this passion project of mine where it's a, it's a company that would connect uh, video gamers suffering with video game addiction and families with health coaches. And he's like, oh, I think that's an excellent idea. And, um, you know, actually you could probably partner up with Liberty. I, you know, you should uh, come to New York with us. We're having a business trip and we could talk more about it. Um, and then in this trip in New York City, we stayed at the Gansevoort Hotel uh, on Park Avenue. And, and he said, look, I really like your idea. But before you can ever help anyone, you need to make a lot of money yourself. So I have a, and this is Jerry saying, he's like, I have a background in real estate. Pick a property in Miami. Pick a handful of properties, we'll get the best one, and you'll get a 25% ownership stake in it. And that's exactly what I did. They, they suggest and, you targeted them and, and that you may have targeted other successful women? Uh, I'm, that's false, that's ridiculous. That's just them trying to, uh, to smear me. Um, it's, I think it's, it's kind of ridiculous to think that this 20-year-old with not many resources, I don't come from a family of a lot of money, uh, was targeting and preying upon uh, this power couple that have all the political connections and all the money in the world. Um, again, I, I feel like I was an ideal target for them. President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, is claiming that he had contact with your attorney about personal photos of the Falwells that they didn't want released publicly. Did you or your lawyers ever speak with Michael Cohen about the Falwells? What do you know about the photos and the Falwells' relationship with Michael Cohen? Well, Michael Cohen corrected himself, and he actually said that he met uh, the attorney of a third party that was, uh, that was suing us. Uh, there was a demand letter where they were threatening to expose the nature of this relationship. Um, and that's, you know, the best of my knowledge, that's what went on. And I, I'll never forget it. Uh, winter 2014, you know, around um, November, December, um, Becky called me and she's like, uh, hey, that lawsuit in Florida, uh, you know, those guys that are suing us, don't worry about it. Michael Cohen's going to take care of it, something to that effect. And I'm, I had no idea who he was. I didn't know him. I'm like, okay, all right, great. We don't have to worry about this. Um, because, again, they were trying to, they were threatening to reveal the nature of this relationship. And I lived through hell at that time. I was going, it was a nightmare. Um, so that, that's all I have to say about that. What do you want to happen now? I've been wanting to cut ties. Again, I have an equity stake in the company, which they offered. I have an equity stake in the company. It has value. And I want to cut ties. And within the operating agreement, there's a selling mechanism. I have every right to want to sell my equity stake. I just want to cut ties. That's all I ever wanted to do. I never asked for more than what was promised to me. And Jerry himself memorialized this offer through text messages. One final question. You also alleged that Jerry Falwell Jr. sent you a compromising photo of a Liberty University student. He says the photo was a friend of his daughter-in-law, not sexual in any way. What do you say to that, and what can you tell us about the photo? Look, 
I don't know the context of the photo. All I know is that I was, I was with him and Becky at a hotel in Miami Beach at the Lowe's Hotel. We were having drinks. They ordered me drinks, we were having drinks, and then he sent me the picture. And I tried to act cool about it. I didn't want to overreact, but I immediately I thought it was bizarre, you know, considering the nature of our relationship. And at that moment, I'm like, huh, something, something more is going on here. Um, I, I don't like this, but I didn't say anything. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Um, but again, I don't know the context behind it. And, and whatever explanation you get is, it's fine. That doesn't matter. The point is, it's why did he have that picture? Why did he share it? And why was he joking about it? He publicly said that he was joking about it. I think that's, that should raise uh, some questions. John Carlo Granda, thanks for your time this morning. No, thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.